Hi everyone, and here's a devotional for Saturday, May 4th, 2019. By faith, Abraham, even though he was too old to have children, and Sarah herself was not able to conceive, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. I have to read that again without hiccuping. Okay. Abraham was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. Hebrews 11.11. Okay, Abraham Abraham had to wait for like many years. Oh my goodness. In what area of your life right now are your own limitations threatening to bring discouragement? In what area have you decided that maybe everything is a hopeless mess? Beloved, regardless of what our eyes are seeing as they look around and take everything in, nothing is ever hopeless for those who are in Christ. For we live by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 2, five. Abraham received the blessing that was promised to him because he believed that the one who made the promise was faithful. Abraham Abraham was called to believe. So that was his task. Let this sink in. God asked Abraham to believe that he could do what he said he, he would do. And my friend, isn't that sometimes the hardest call God places on us? What is he asking you to believe that he can do for you? Abraham was too old. Sarah was barren. Yet God promised them offspring more numerous than the stars. Genesis 5.15.1 And my friend, he fulfilled it. God makes no empty promises. Even when Sarah tried to connive her way into the promised connive her way into the promise by having Abram sleep with her maidservant, see Genesis 16, 1-4. God firmly held to his way of doing things, and in his mercy, he did not punish Abraham and Sarah for their foolish attempts to expedite the process, Genesis 17, 15-21. Have you ever been tempted to help God fulfill a promise you felt he'd made in your life? I have. Beloved, he is Lord of all creation. He does not need your assistance or mine. If he has promised it, it will come to pass. Let's be patient and hold on to the hope that we have in him who has made the promise. You aren't meant to fix it or to make it happen on your own. You are meant to believe, regardless of what you see, entrusting your life and your circumstances into his capable and faithful hands. In the name of Jesus, amen. <sighs> Again, it's um, how much do I say? <laughs> um, Tuesday, I had a situation like that. Um, you know, there's the promise in Acts sixteen thirty one that says, "Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household." Now, my household, I take that to mean my family in general and those around me that are not Christians yet. Yet, being the key word. I mean, absolutely no offense if this person is listening. None whatsoever. This is just about my, um, what the Lord showed me and everything like that. I could have made a mess. Um, I wanted to really talk to this person about their disbelief in God. But I felt the Holy Spirit saying to me, no, it's not time. Not, don't do it. Um, because I, I felt like, you know, I could have pushed her away instead of, of um, drawing her closer to Christ. Um, yeah, so the Lord really kind of saved my butt on that one. <laughs> I did not um, make the mess. At least I hope I didn't. I, I mean, we had a beautiful time, me and this person. We had a very beautiful, wonderful time. Um, there was a time when I did make a mess. Carrie, you can attest to this. You were there, unfortunately, and you were the brunt. But, um, <laughs> sister Carrie, that is my sister. But we learned the hard way that, you know, cause Rhonda and I had just become Christians and we were like, yeah, you know, you, you gotta get to know Jesus and da 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 da. And we were like bombarding her on all sides when she would come home to visit. And I guess she had told mom that she didn't want to come back from, from Florida to Ohio to visit us because, you know, we were like pushing her and stuff. And that wasn't cool. That wasn't what God wanted us to do. So what we had to learn was that we had to um, love her and not push her. Words are only good when they're necessary. What's that, what's that thing about share the gospel 
and if necessary, use words. Is that a St. Francis thing? I don't know who said that, but yeah, if necessary, use words or something like that. I usually get those things wrong. But anyway, yeah, we're just, we're supposed to really show the gospel. We're supposed to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And if necessary, we have to use words. And my hospice volunteer coordinator is texting me up a storm. I'll get to her in a minute. Um, So let's just take a minute right now to pray for our unsaved loved ones and what our part is going to be in that salvation. You know, even if God needs to send somebody else, um, that's fine too. Or if he's going to send us. Father in heaven, I just pray um, for your wisdom and your guidance as we interact daily even or weekly or whatever the case may be with our unsaved loved ones and um, Lord I just pray that you would help them draw them to you Lord I pray that you would reveal yourself to them and that you would um, would just show them that you are God and that you're real Um, and I pray Lord that you would help us as you know, we are, we are interact with them and everything just to know what you would have us to do or not to do what to say and not to say, and please just help us to be listening to you and, and knowing how you would have us to, um, to help these people in our lives in Jesus name. Amen. And may the Lord bless you all and be with you till tomorrow.